different continents, and actually the plastic that the me is molded into, there's only one factory, and it's actually in the UK, that it could be poured into, because it requires six different ports to put all the plastic into it, not just pouring one little thing of plastic, liquid plastic in the top. So this is an example of what Sandy and Maureen talked about. This is the study that Dr. Nag shows that <clears throat> the microlayering technology ends up with three times the absorption. And it is a combination of the freshness of the particle coming out in the microlayering, the fact that you are less likely to miss something. I'm sorry, I keep coming and going. I don't know where to hold it. Uh, and it ends up with three times the absorption. That, again, is another feature of the me that nobody has but me. So where does all this come from? So as you can see, it comes from our world-class scientists. So this is over 30 years of age lock information. Everything that has to do with age lock has to do with gene expression. It has uh, over 75 scientists working on it, and there are over 150 different universities that participate with us in studies, and I'm going to show you uh, one at the end. So, what's important about this, and why this is so different, is that the sciences go after the source of aging. They're not just doing the traditional approach, which is covering it up. So this is not makeup. These are things that are absorbed, that make a difference to the collagen, the blood flow, all of the stuff that's inside the skin. And it is uh, something that is a, a history of innovation. And I'm going back to 2008 when Dr. Nags focused on the Arnox enzyme, which is age-related, what AR stands for, which is a gene in our skin, uh, pardon me, an enzyme in our skin that is expressed over time more, and it creates free radicals in the skin to damage the collagen and the elastin and the other particles there. So in 2008, she published the first paper showing that she could suppress that with a super serum. So there are fewer free radicals to damage the skin. But that's not where it stops. In 2009, after looking at all of these, and I'll show you some gene chips, all of our human genes, approximately 400 or so, were found in the face that change with age that lead to the things that we know as aging. And that all came about with this little gene chip technology. We only dreamed when I was in medical school that we could figure out how to look at how a gene is expressed. Then about 10 years ago, we figured out how to look at one gene expression. Now, with this microarray, we can look at how all of our genes are expressed and we can do it in a short period of time, and it's just about this big. So in an afternoon, you can find out what something has happened when it used to take hours and hours and hours and days. It expresses itself as a little heat map. Some genes are overexpressed, some genes are underexpressed with age, and then you can match those with the perfect serum to reset the gene to act like it was youthful. Nowadays, we go even a step further, which is more quantitative data with the PCR, which is polymerase chain reaction. Once you see which genes are changed, you can do this. So when you see and hear Joe Chang talk about a half a billion data points and rising every day, he's talking about these things. So what does that mean? So when you just look, at the skin youth gene complexes that has to do with skin structure. We think of that as fine lines and wrinkles. It has to do with pigmentation, which is the, the pigmentation that happens over time. Hydration, which has to do with the uh, water, and I'll show you something interesting about that in a minute. And cell turnover, which has to do with smoothness, texture, the radiance, and the pore size. So then they went further and they were able to find some of the body skin youth gene complexes which affect the skin. And those primarily have to do with hydration and structure. So you can see that we are adding each time something that has to do with looking young by 
resetting the genes. Finally then, except it's not right to say finally, because they're still working on this all the time, but in 2012, they expanded the facial gene complexes to include Fermi. So now, what we have today is this. We've added Fermi to the bind lines and wrinkles and the skin structure to give us all that youthful look. Again, personalized to you, something no one else has, and here we have it. So, in addition to that, I think the perfect combination, if you were to ask me, what can I do to make my skin the youngest, the best, there is an answer, but it's two things. It is the age lock me plus the youth. I love to talk about these two pills because it is truly a remarkable thing that once the gene as were looked at and we knew what the genes were and we knew what genes changed, and these are systemic genes now, not just facial genes, and they're probably somewhere around 1,200 of them, and then the scientists at New Skin went to <clears throat> their 2,500 different, uh, not all botanicals, but 2,500 compounds that had all been shown in the literature to have some positive effect and all been tested. They could then run those through the gene chips and come out with the 16 things that are in here that are the most robust at resetting the genes for all of those things you all know as uh, the aging defense mechanisms. And let's look at one of those or two of those. Uh, you know that this is a unique blend that comes, uh, somebody has already mentioned it, from all over the world, whether it's purple corn uh, in Peru or it's not juice in Japan and it's all in the perfect amount. Occasionally someone will say, well, okay, I'm, I, I can see what these ingredients are and I'm gonna go to uh, my local pharmacy and I'm gonna buy all these things. And I say, well, do you know the right amount? Do you know the source? Do you know all those other things? And of course the answer is they don't. But to give you an idea of the perfect amount, if you look at this and the vitamin K2 in here, <clears throat> which is, one of those compounds that has been proven in many, many studies, the Rotterdam study is 5,000 people, and the uh, EPIC study, which is the follow-up of the Rotterdam study, is 16,000 people. If you have more than 34 micrograms of vitamin K2 in your diet, each one of these has 10, that's 20 in the morning, 20 in the evening, it activates the enzyme system that takes calcium out of the blood vessels, and it activates the enzyme system that builds bone matrix and puts the calcium into the bones. So when people ask me how much calcium should I take, I say, are you taking youth? Because that's the answer, is the K2 in the youth. That's not all the K2 does in the youth. The K2 also increases the elasticity of blood vessels and it tightens up collagen. So it's just, it is, wow. Sorry, I have a chair in my <laughs> okay. So let's talk about a clinical study. Uh, this is one of the first ones that's published, Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology, 2016. Um, can't remember if uh, Stephen Wood or Angela Massalutis is the first name. Zoe Bravos uh, from Duke, uh, now she runs her independent lab uh, in Raleigh, is the last name. So this is women between 40 and 75 that had Fitzpatrick one or two type skin, which means very white, easily burned. And they were evaluated by a board certified dermatologists who did not know whether they took two of these twice a day for eight weeks or not. So they didn't know what they were looking at. The results are those who took it for eight weeks had a more youthful appearance in radiate in radiance and texture in overall appearance. Wow. The self-assessments were equally as good. I didn't show those. But somebody would say, okay, well, th th that's just what a 
dermatologist was going to say, and it's still a little bit subjective. It's not really. I mean, they do have rules about it. But <clears throat> they actually had some measurements with instruments. Notice that I think this tool is really a cool tool here. It has to do with measuring trends epidermal water loss. It is more rapid when we are young, coming from deep down underneath the skin, through the skin. And there's a tool, it's a little suction cup you can put on after eight weeks of this, more fluid is passing through wow. these women, just like when they were using them. Uh, the elasticity is a different kind of a measure uh, where they pick up the skin and drop it, and they have a fancy way to measure that. It's actually called a capometer. It's always done three centimeters down from here, right here, uh, and it showed the same thing, significant increases in elasticity, all measurements of youth. Now, this same group of women put their hand on the scanner before and after. And this is what happened. In eight weeks, a rise of 10,000 Raman intensity counts. So they're on their way when they get up here into the 50s to reducing their risk for breast cancer. OK, so proof of an aging defense mechanism, or two. We're going to talk about inflammation. And we're going to talk about um, apoptosis, which is cell death, which is called by DNA damage. You've heard of the ADM, the repair of DNA, or protection of DNA. Okay, well first let's talk about inflammation. So this is a this MED, minimal erythematosis. These are fancy dermatology fields, and they burned the skin, is what they did. This is no burning. It's a little thing that looks like a flashlight. And you think, oh, well, they shine it right here. Actually, if you look at the study, they've shown it right here, <laughs> which is a place that, uh, for most people, doesn't reach the sun very often. <laughs> if you live in Austin, that's not true. <laughs> so these are people before age blocking with you. All of this red stuff that you can see there, and I hope you can see it well, it is greater with the higher the dose, means a sunburn, that is inflammation. It's measurable inflammation. You can see less when you compare these two in this group that took the youth. That's proof of control of the inflammation, that ADM. Now, in addition to that, they did little biopsies of each one of those squares that you saw, and they looked at the cells that were dying. That means the DNA had been damaged and the cell was going to ultimately die. What they found is after the age loss of youth, the cell count that was dying was less than 50%. Mm -hmm. Wow. How can you ever be without your youth? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so. Now, with age lock. <clears throat> wow. And you. <laughs> 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 